Hi everyone, welcome for the session today. I'm Neha Kicharya from eBay. And today I'll be talking about how to ace the competing priorities as a product manager. Before we get deep dive into the session today, a little bit about myself. I work as a senior product manager at eBay Payments Platform, where we heavily focus on to launching the payment products to ease the life for consumer experience perspective and to simplify the experience, the payment experience for seller and buyer perspective. I got an overall 14 years of industry experience where nine years lies into payments and fintech. I'm a graduate in electrical engineering and I love building the product for consumer and stakeholder and to solve the business problem. Before we deep dive into the agenda, let's talk about what are we going to focus today. So I'll be talking about the product roadmap. How does the product prioritization being done? Why is it important? How does the prioritization work? The decision making and a few closing notes. So with that, let's get started for the session today. First, I would like to draw your attention onto a product roadmap, what and why of it. A product roadmap is a process which tells you why to take an action towards an ultimate vision and to the path to achieve the same. Um, as an organization, usually it's an early process. Like, you know, we already are in the, almost in the edge two of 2022. And I'm pretty sure come fast forward Q4 of this year, mostly all of the organization will actually start talking to us and start planning towards what are their product charter and what are the business opportunity as an organization they would like to focus for the next year. And it is not just restricted to a team or a product or a domain, but it's actually cross across the board in the organization, right? There could be a sales team would, which would have their own list of priorities which they want to focus on. There would be a business team, there would be a marketing team, there would be a legal team. So every domain, every BU have their own process of defining and listing down what are the areas, what are the focus area they want to actually deep dive into the upcoming year. And the roadmap is not just restricted to an year to start with because it's a top down approach. You start up with, you know, an overall yearly process, but then it also gets sliced down into a quarterly process. You know, you, you list down what you actually expect from your teams to be done the whole year. And then you actually slice and dice into like quarterly and monthly and, you know, all the way down to the sprint planning. And we'll get to that in the subsequent slide. But at a high level, a product roadmap is a process where you actually define a goal and describe the vision and strategy to provide a guiding document for executing the strategy and get and making sure that the internal stakeholders are in alignment and to facilitate the discussion of option and scenario planning. In a very fundamental way, a product roadmap is a top down approach to see what are the domain specific area and the domain specific product you want to launch as an organization and also as a part of business unit. Roadmap doesn't give the deep dive of what and when, but it gives the vision. Hypothetically, let's take an example. Suppose you are in an organization which is focusing on to the messaging platform and uh, for certain com for certain domains from your company uh, like say sales team wants to actually focus onto the user retention and user engagement on the same side the business team wants to focus on the revenue generation and the legal team wants to make sure that they are uh, regulated and properly compliant you know by all their strategy uh, initiatives so based on here we see we saw about three different views that like you know the legal the business and the sales, right? Each of them, they have their own set of priorities which they want to focus on a given year. Now, you really just cannot collate everything all together and say, this is my roadmap, right? Sales team will have their own charter of the roadmap. Your business team will have their own charter of the roadmap. And similarly, the legal team will have their own charter of roadmap. And suppose if you are working as like say UI or a UX product manager for the messaging services for the company, there will be certain product ask which will be intersecting your domain and you will be expected to do the prioritization. So let's look a little bit more in detail about how things actually shape up. So as a starting point, everybody, every domain actually, and your stakeholder, your executive team, your leadership team actually have their own focus areas which they want to actually go deep dive onto upcoming year or upcoming quarter. And then from there on the actual kickoff of prioritization starts shaping up. Um, continuation for the roadmap, I've taken a snapshot of a very simplistic way. 
breakdown of how a multiple product roadmap works right suppose again you if i am a, a messaging app product manager and i have a prioritization of three focus areas like you know if i have gotten the requirement that you know there has to be certain focus and enhancement for the web platform mobile platform and localized crm portal right how this slice and dice and slating of the different milestone under that product end to end if you see the product one which is the web platform here it is starting it's almost taking like you know the h1 of a given year right like it's starting from january to may but then how the different milestone and the different bucketization has happened across that overall end to end product life cycle right there are certain aspect of api then security upgrade segment so this is how a roadmap when you are talking about a multiple product roadmap would look like this is not restricted to just the only way of defining it but then this is one of the way methodology where you know things are actually bucketized and then you are slice and dice over the different milestone so again as a quick summary the roadmaps help to create the alignment and excitement towards the product strategy um this visibility works for the product manager in advantage from top to bottom approach as i called earlier that it's a top down approach it's not a bottoms up so which means that you actually start from the grand like grand level of visibility and then you know you narrow it down to like you know um features and uh, enhancement and uh, different kind of bug fixing or you know like revamping all together a particular feature which is existing today roadmap also facilitate the cross functional team collaboration and clarity around priorities as i called out that if you are a messaging app uh, product manager and then not every initiative for a given year or a given particular time frame would intersect or dissect your own domain but then there are certain overlaps roadmap is a very good opportunity to actually jot down and list down for a given particular product upgrade or a product launch what are the dependent teams would be required not every product team on an organization is required for every product launch but maybe suppose for the first one if you are launching for a web platform enhancement right you need a security team you need your uh, infrastructure team you need your ui team your ux team each of these team will have their product manager and then the back end they'll have your engineering partners right how do you actually integrate all together because just a priority one for my team doesn't mean a priority uh one for somebody else so it has to be a very um uh i would say like coordinated effort from all the teams where they all can work together on a given time frame to deliver and launch a particular product roadmap also works as a powerful channel of communication because when you actually start calling out and jotting down the dependency from the different teams this gives an opportunity to sit together and make sure that okay is there any missing piece are we actually uh overlooking any particular component which might be instrumental but then we have not actually called out in the process so this is pretty much the i would say parts and parcel of what a roadmap does and as a product manager it is very important that whatever methodology you actually is being used in your organization you make yourself well versed with it sometimes you know there are different tools and different portal and different mechanism how a roadmap uh, uh you know initiation is done on an organization and it could be as simple as also an excel sheet or a google document right it doesn't matter agnostic of what methodologies is being implemented by the company what matters is making sure that all the dependent teams understanding of what the ask is making sure that there's a perfect clarity of what is being expected from your product region or your product domain or your platform it's very important as a product manager that you stay on the top of the whole roadmap discussion because when it goes from roadmap to the either like you know backlog or you know prioritization it's always helpful and beneficial that you know and you are aware of what's the ask about so this is where the roadmap comes into play and next now we'll go to the prioritization once you have again hypothetically suppose uh, in an organization the 2023 charter is already created the roadmap has already been drafted that these are the five business area or the key area as a bu or as an organization we want to focus on like you know sales revenue user retention legal compliance and say uh, industry standard like you know keeping up to date like 
um, the technology. Maybe you know the fifth domain is to make sure that all your technology and all the uh, supporting apps in the backend is actually up to the standard. You know, it's able to take the traffic, it's able to take the growth, the user growth, and the incremental data. So, if these are the five areas as a roadmap. Um, you know, ha- which has been drafted for you as a product manager to look onto, and of course your peers as well. A product prioritization is a strategy which is used to decide what product feature or initiative or product management or engineering team should work on first. Um, it is a disciplined process of evaluating the relative importance of work ideas requests to eliminate the wasteful practices. In a simplistic term, if I try to oversimplify what is prioritization is, as a product manager, you decide what feature goes first, what feature goes like you know later on, and what are the feature which is probably good to have, but then you really don't want to support at the given quarter or a month or a sprint planning, right? So prioritization does few of the key um, aspect in the overall product life cycle, right? So let's let's talk through like what does it actually does. It solves the problem quotient and the business opportunity. It helps gathering the requirement and helps to define the goals. Right? Like again, suppose there's a product which is committed in the market to be launched in a Q3 of 2023, and here you are in December planning to do the prioritization for that product. Right? As a product manager, it's very instrumental and very important where you actually have a very proper and a very specific planning of when does the dev completion happens when do you actually want to start the uat or the testing when do you actually want to do the beta or the pilot or the smoke launch and then how when do you actually want to ramp it to like say 100 percent and then launch it for the overall market globally ranking and scoping and again we'll go in detail about the ranking and scoping but this is again one of the very important aspect of doing the prioritization which means that as a product manager you rank and you scope all the charter and all the list of the product which is expected as a part of roadmap um, with a specific numbering or a grading, which actually towards the end of it, it actually gives you a clean and a very better visibility of what goes first, what goes second, what goes later, what goes deprioritized for again, a month or a quarter or a given year, right? That is very, and based on the organization, there are different methodologies which is being used. Um, some example being there's a RISEF method, there's a PD metrics, and we'll go in, in deep about what the different methodologies which are being used. Communication with wider audience. In a prioritization process, it's not just very integral to use a very clean and a very transparent communication channel just with your stakeholder or your executive or your leadership team and your engineering team, but you have to actually make sure that you are including whoever is relevant for that product launch. There might be as um, irrelevant as some specific group who has nothing to do with the product build or, you know, nothing to do with any kind of integration with your product feature launch. But at the same time, um, that particular product launch is going to impact something if they are not involved, right? Sometimes it's very normal to overlook certain group whom you don't think have a direct correlation to your product launch. But at the same time, you have to, as a product manager, it's your responsibility to actually make sure whatever decision you are making and whatever notes and whatever kind of prioritization result you are drafting about, it's being shared across as widely as possible because that's a very key important aspect of making sure that you are doing a good job in communicating the changes, the proposed changes and the proposed prioritization result with everybody. Sometimes uh, some some particular group is being overlooked and then later on it really um, hits harder when it's being discovered at the 11th hour of the product launch that hey by the way you are making this particular change but as a part of your change something in our world is going to be you know impacted or broken and that time it's very a very very messy situation to actually safeguard the interest of the overall project timeline and the health check and then you know it really like sabotage the whole um product planning and the whole delivery um, uh, aspect of the implementation part. Building the right product for the right user at the right time. I think prioritization is all about, I mean, if if I have to sum up the prioritization, it's basically nothing but building the right product for a right user at the right time. There might be, what it means is, um, would like to elaborate a little further, like you might have 10 different stakeholders as a part of your domain or your platform or your particular product area, right? And 
it's you and your responsibility as a product manager to make sure that which stakeholder and which request from a stakeholder group is what you deem as business critical and when you are actually going through the prioritization you make sure that wearing that lens of what is actually important for the company for the group for the result um you are actually picking and choosing the right product from passively a right stake like you know a particular stakeholder for a right user at a right time right there might be as important as a burning issue on certain bug fix which needs to be done as a part of current process and that's impacting like you know a particular country or a region say uh, in in asia certain part of the user are not able to see a proper method you know when they are actually logging into the system and they are not able to complete their messaging they're not able to send their messaging failed right i mean in 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 a normal scenario it is a p1 bug right of course it requires an attention it's not nothing new it's something which has to be enhanced how it's done today and then needs to be delivered but at the same time as a product manager are you deeming it as or oh, good to have some time in q2 or you think that hey this is one of the key aspects which should be delivered in like the month of january and february so that the impact the user impact and the user experience is is at the minimum um, you know they have the best user experience while using your product so that's what a prioritization is something which helps across is to build the right product for the right user at the right time now let's focus on the different methodologies for prioritization right i mean again it's very agnostic of the tool and the method every organization have their own sometimes they have something internal it's not just necessary that you have to use something which is like you know widely defined and uh, industry standard uh, i have seen many organization using their own methodologies and then you know excelling in their like you know totally like nailing down the whole prioritization process so some of the key widely known and widely uh, uh, you know like leveraged uh, prioritization method which i have tried to jot down just for the sake of understanding um are uh, these few the first one is a moscow method again as the name suggests it is basically uh, as a product manager you try to tag each of the item and just like have must have should have could have or without right and then it it is very self explanatory when you try to tag your initiatives in the road map with either of these tagging it's it's very clear you know during the decision making because when you're talking about the roadmap you know it's not just restricted to 5 10 15 right sometimes it's like in hundreds right and across the organization but then when you are doing like a roadmap between like 200 plus 300 plus sometimes 500 for a given year right um this is where it helps because then when you can try to collate it into a buckets <coughs> sorry like say you have 300 request and then out of 300 75 or 80 of them are must have so that makes the decision very clear that okay these 80 are going in the bucket for q1 delivery and then you know again for the slicing down into the monthly de deliverables and then the you know like biweekly sprint planning kind of thing story mapping this is again um traditionally it's used when you try to um tag and bucketize all your initiatives into the story like you know epic and you know user story kind of framework so this is where uh, it's used the next is a rice scoring which is basically uh, as a product manager you just try to like you know when the ask is something very heavy on um user impact right like where majority of the ask are user impacting and then they, this is a basically a framework to actually score each of the initiative and how it's done is you know you just try as a product manager you just try to see like how much is the reach like you know how much is the reach user reach or like you know user impact for that particular ask uh, you multiply that with the impact and again impact has a grading of you know like most impact high impact uh, medium impact low impact no impact and then each of them have like you know scoring point you can start with like 3 for the most impact 2 for the high impact and then 1 for the medium impact 0 for no impact and then confidence as a product manager how much confidence you are um confident you are in that in that ask you know like 80% traditionally is graded as one of the very good uh, parameter or a benchmark for that confidence level to be and then you multiply that with the effort right how much is a pd effort uh, effort and then accordingly whatever is the score you just provide that score to each of this uh, initiative next is the value versus effect right? effort right and again um this is something where you actually draw a graph or you know like a chart kind of thing and then from there on you um basically try to uh, group them into which initiative are like high in value versus uh 
low in value and then which of the initiative are high in effort versus low in effort and then you know the intersection of value versus effort is where you actually group them uh, that also gives a very you know like a clear way of um, distinguishing that which is basically you are going ahead with and which is what we are going to ignore with um, product tree team based coding based on domains again you know like out of like 300 initiative you can just group them into okay these are related to sales these are related to um revenue these are related to compliance these are related to say uh, you know like a user experience these are related to uh, marketing and then um every organization have certain things which are totally non negotiable right i mean uh, traditionally if you see something which has to do with like legal or regulatory or you say like you know um user engagement i mean certain things which are always high in the bar and when you try to do the theme based scoring that also helps giving like a broader i mean prioritization usually is not like a one day exercise where you can just sit for 2 hours with like 30 40 people and then you're done with it it's a gradual process there's a kick off process and then you know like you keep refining there's a multiple iteration of you know you start with 300 items and you go to 200 then you again shrink it down from 200 to like you know say 150 so it's a multiple iteration based engagement and when you start with the th- when you actually apply the theme based scoring then also it really helps because as an organization you know what are the key critical areas where you want to base your prioritization on uh the next is organization based priority themes and strategy and again this is basically when your organization is using their own um uh you know methodology of priority themes and strategy so that's where it comes into play um then brainstorming on list of product themes to set the ranking sometimes you know this is also needful that in addition to any of the methodology you use what is very omnipresent mechanism is to continuously being able to brainstorm the list of product theme to set the ranking right um it's not as simple as somebody says hey i think this should be number 1 and then you know rest of the room uh, agree straight right like you know the rational behind it the reasoning behind it the user statistics behind it like why you think something is like is number one and what are the data and the supporting matrix which actually compel to make that particular initiative number one so brainstorming is again an integral part of the overall prioritization method so one thing i want to call out is like as earlier different organization leverage different methods or ha- sometimes they use like hybrid method they also use rysef and then also use like you know uh, value versus effort so uh, there is no like a right or wrong way of doing the prioritization in terms of the methodologies i mean whatever works for whichever team or organization or uh, you know domain um that's what you know folks usually prefer with so the different organization actually use different method or hybrid method to prioritize the roadmap feature and that's something which exists and you know it 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 works pretty fine for the companies and the teams um uh, next i would like to give a um, high level snapshot of we talked about value and complexity metrics so i just wanted to give like how usually it works right i mean you try to uh, break it down into like you know four buckets if you will um this chart is like you know it's axis is like you know the value versus the implementation complexity and then you just try to feel like okay what group of projects goes as a high value and low complexity which is here in the first bucket and then which of them actually goes to the uh second bucket which is high value and then high in complexity um so it's it's very easy to you know make a decision when you go with this methodology because something which is high in value and low complexity that means like the cost is low and the output result is high that means it's a quick win you know there's a no brainer and then you actually tag it as okay i'm going to pick it up and this is a high priority but then something which are complex ones like you know something which is like low value and high complexity that means you know if there is no like a output out of that initiative but then you know it's also equally costly to implement that it's easy to deprioritize uh something which is low value and low complexity you know some that is something you can put it in the revisit later on in a backlog right okay we need to do it but then you know it's not like a burning topic to be initiated just right away and the second bucket which is a high com- value and high complexity that means it is high in the value but it's also equally costly to implement that goes into the strategic initiative bucket which of course is delivered but then you know um, there are more uh, needful to be done to actually propel those kind of um, product features In the next slide I would like to talk about the importance of the prioritization right like why we do prioritization and what's going to happen if there's no prioritization so with <coughs> sorry 
so without prioritization the roadmap and the planning become chaotic right we we know that like you know it's it's a matter of fact that um if you have like 100 of initiative or the ask from different stakeholder and if like you know also from your organization perspective as a product manager if you don't do it that means everybody will think that hey it's a high priority and then it becomes chaotic and you know it's it, it becomes difficult to manage every ask and every stakeholder push for their ask as a high priority i mean that is something which is inevitable that if you don't if you don't safeguard the boundary lines of okay these are the prioritization result that means everything will end up becoming high priority and then it becomes very difficult to set up the expectation at the last minute with every stakeholder it actually causes the unmanageable product pipeline right it keeps piling up because not everything in a given time frame is what you need to work upon on a given year or a given quarter uh sometimes there are late discovery sometimes there are some uh p1 p0 bug which came as a part of recent product launch right so it's not just it can hardly decrease but it's most likely it, like you know uh, subjected to increase the product pipeline so it becomes very unmanageable if you don't do the prioritization digression from the core capabilities requirement for an organization of course like you know when when you have like multiple competing priorities right it becomes it causes lots of as i said like you know churn and digression from the core capability requirement for an organization without a prioritization exercise chances of building incompetent product right sometimes if your engineering team is like overwhelmed with like too many ask right i mean there is a highly likelihood that um the product will not be as competent as expected it to be and prioritization also provides a clean sense of building a new launch versus enhancement right it gives an opportunity that suppose something needs to be enhanced like you know as a product manager you wear that lens and you try to vet the option as to oh is it like all together a fresh fresh implementation or is it something you know which can be lived with uh, the enhancement right something is like very critical and high in complexity and high in um, implementation cost then you know at that time you actually try to um uh, you know choose for like you know a little bit of enhancement or a hot fix and then later on you know you can just revamp that whole product um all together so that also give a clean sense of uh vetting that option of okay do you really want to launch it as a new product launch or is it fine with the enhancement now a very interesting point uh in 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 this webinar today is how do you as a product manager how do you pick the competing priority so based on my experience and what i have seen um you know in my current role as well as my earlier roles in other organization like you know i've just listed some of the key do's and don'ts kind of things you know which really helped me uh to make a decision of uh when there are like multiple competing priorities i mean i all of these points which i'm going to talk right now uh, really helped me to actually uh, make the decision so i would like to share some of them with you like you know uh, the first one is as a product manager always ensure to get a good understanding of the ask right if you have like say 50 ask coming or like say 30 40 ask coming for a given year or um, you know half yearly ask or like a quarterly ask right i mean of course you cannot you're not being expected to know like deep dive of every uh, you know nook and cranny of that product feature ask but then you should have as a product manager you're expected to have a good understanding of the ask so that when you're making a decision or when you're vetting with the different stakeholders and different teams as to hey this is the build i need to do and i think i would need like other teams like a b c d e you know until you have a good understanding of the ask you cannot make that identification um set the expectation early in the process with all the concerned team right like whatever decision you are doing as i said like prioritization is a is a iterative process right it's not just one meeting a uh, room full of people and then you're done with it it's a iterative process and also you have to do much before actually you go into the meeting you also have to do a lot of homework you have to study the requirement you have to make your own decision of do's and don'ts and good to have versus must have versus you know deferred later so do your homework and then set the expectation early in the process if suppose something is coming as a very pressing ask and as a product manager of that feature you think that hey i don't think this is a very pressing ask for like say first month we can probably do it in the end of the quarter you should have you should have that expectation set with the stakeholder early in the process prioritize the cross domain communication again as i said it's a very important to actually jot down and list down all the different team members or the different teams who are required to actually build that product feature together with you and your team to actually ship end to end product 
act as an interface between leadership and domain team sometimes you know um, when you are dealing with the leadership team uh, at times it happens that you know only certain like a high level things are being um, uh, asked from you right but then converting that high level ask into the detailed format of okay you know matrix supporting documents chart research analytics and you know like you know user impact and experience so converting that one line ask into the multiple dimension multi dimensional um result aspect is something as a product manager you should always focus on doing list the complete set of priorities right i mean that's also one of the very key part to make that decision that you know you should have the complete set of priorities because what as a product manager you are going to focus on a q1 or a q or any quarter of a given year is not just the it right there are certain things which would be like a carry forward from your previous quarter there's something which are like backlog from the previous year so it's not just the fresh ask which you need to focus on you have to actually make sure that there is some bandwidth and some capacity reserved for items which are unforeseen like you know previous year's backlog or previous quarter backlog as well as what are the uh, you know what are the capacity you are actually saving for something you know goes wrong or you know a production bug so you have to actually as a product manager just list the complete set of priorities focus on the customer needs i mean of course you what is required by the customer is always always usually the number one priority as a product manager so always like try to vet your need and ask from the customer perspective like you know uh, if this doesn't get delivered how will the customer be impacted can customer live with it or is it like really a deal breaker for any customer to use your product or you know use your website or ui or you know like or that feature uh, at the least tag the must have versus good to have as i called earlier in the prioritization process it's always helpful right when you get like the whole list of you know multiple ask um always try to see you know just don't wait for the meeting or the prioritization discussion to happen much before that you should do always your homework and try to see from your perspective and from your understanding and knowledge what do you think is a uh, good to have versus must have and that makes you know uh, discussion push back trade off much easier in the later phase of the prioritization ask the rational for any pushing ask you know sometimes uh, there are certain group who really want their all they need to be met come what may and when that happens always ask a question it doesn't harm as a product manager to actually ask and get a clarity as much clarity at the least to any stakeholder who's pressing hard like hey i want this to be like you know the first product to be shipped uh, for a given quarter and this is a deal breaker for us and we really want this to happen but then usually a product manager to stakeholder relation is not just like you know one stakeholder with one product manager you have multiple stakeholder to cater to so if there's something which you don't align to always feel free and always have that uh, um, behavior to actually ask the rational and understand more in detail for any pushing ask start from the mvp right like that's again like mvp kpi always try to uh, envision your output or your launch of the product with the mvp right like there are a lot of things as a part of um, product launch um stakeholder or the user would hope to see right but then what is the bare minimum you need to do or to ship on a given timeline on a given product and then what are the further enhancement you can actually pick on on the subsequent uh, months or the quarter so you should always try to have that kind of discrete and thinking process in the back of your mind propose trade off as required like this is also certain things right like as i called out like suppose you have three backlog from the previous quarter and then you have only capacity to support five ask in a given month right so you have three backlog which are already like high critical and then you have five new ask right what kind of trade off you can do how can what kind of trade off can you offer but trade off should not be i mean in my experience trade off should not be just as simple as hey you know what you want me to build like five new launches um these are the three trade off i want to do like always like support it with again the supporting document always back it up always back up your trade off with you know subsequent evidence so that you know whoever is making the decision your leadership or your stakeholder sometimes the same stakeholder have multiple ask from the backlog and the new initiative right so when you're proposing that trade off option to them um there should be enough data for them to make that easier decision right rather than um pushing back that no we cannot allow the trade off and at the same time um 
you know, you also, they also expect you to deliver certain key products. Communication. I mean, that is one of the most, most key integral part for doing either the roadmap or the prioritization. As soon as there is a decision making done, right? Maybe your prioritization is a week long process, right? There are three meetings on a week where you start again with like 300 products and then, you know, you narrow it down to like, say, 120, 150, right? So whenever that is done, right? I mean, I, I it doesn't matter. Like, you know, it's an Excel sheet, it's a Google doc, it's a Jira dashboard, or it's like, you know, some other ticketing base, like, you know, Kanban or whatever it is be. Um, whenever any kind of milestone is reached in terms of the prioritization, always share it with your key stakeholder and, you know, your team, your engineering partners, your cross-functional dependent teams, because that really helps making uh, you know, staying on the same page from everybody perspective. So that again, in the middle of the quarter, you don't have any complaints from somebody else saying, oh, we didn't know that this is a number one priority. We have marked it as a number four priority. So we cannot deliver it till the next quarter. And you actually committed your business to ship that product at the end of the quarter, right? So communication is the most important aspect while doing the prioritization. Even if you think somebody is not relevant, it doesn't harm to loop them in the communication channel. But then at least that eliminates the last minute discovery for a lot of the other teams. Now, in this part, I'll be talking about like high level summary of what we have discussed so far, right? So again, the overall methodology of beginning from the roadmap to the prioritization, like at a high level, the key points I would like to summarize again is emphasize on a clear and a well-defined roadmap, very important. Unless you have a very well-defined roadmap, it becomes a lot of it's, it becomes a very high time consuming exercise to even get through the roadmap, you know, and then comes the prioritization. Uh, include the supporting data for the prioritization. Again, if you are going, if you are offering for a trade off, or if you are trying to push back on an ask, or if you are actually grading it, grading something high as low, always back it up with certain data or, you know, some, some sort of evidence. Like, you know, it could be like a market cap data, user sign up. Again, I'm talking in terms of if you are, uh, you know, uh, if your company is focused on, like, say, again, user retention, user engagement, market cap, revenue, right? So always try to back it up with certain, and it's not just limited to these um, factors, but then some of them to name a few would be market cap, user sign of cost, revenue, adaptation, customer feedback, etc. Share the product charter well in advance with stakeholder with weekly follow-up sync up. So I, this is, again, you know, um, once you are through the roadmap, once you're through the prioritization, that is not just the end of it, right? Like always have like a close sync up and or like, you know, at the minimum a weekly cadence with your stake, all your stakeholder where you actually go with the progress and the challenges and the roadblocks or, you know, where each of your products. So once that particular quarter or, you know, the time period has begun to actually deliver the product, right? Like don't just stop after the prioritization. Uh, don't wait for the team to notify that, okay, now we are testing, we are ready to ship the product after the, you know, after successful testing. Always involve your stakeholder throughout the process, you know, because it, it again, uh, it if something goes wrong, unfortunately, it gives you an opportunity to buy in some time and, uh, you know, it eliminates the chances of complaining at the last minute. Documentation and tool triaging is very important. Again, you know, uh, wh wherever, like, you know, as I said, right, you know, roadmap, you should have a complete and a very clear and a clean methodology of documenting. You know. the, again, if you're using like, you know, a ticketing system, you know, like, what is that? You know, you save that and you take a snapshot of it and, you know, save it in a wiki page or in a Word document, right? Similarly, what had been the prioritization result, like, you know, document ticket and keeping it in a, in a central repository and then shared with all the key members and the stakeholder. Similarly, the overall product life cycle, which is a, altogether a separate topic, but then it has a relevance in this discussion. Um, wherever you are in the whole product life cycle, make sure that everything is being, you know, uh, updated to the teams, to the stakeholder, to the dependent teams, leadership um, on, a, on a timely manner that where you are and how's the health check for that particular project. So that's pretty much, you know, at a high level about the roadmap, prioritization, uh, how to make the decision and then, you know, certain good practices I wanted to share in today's webinar. I hope that was helpful for you. And that pretty much bring, brings us at the top of the hour for the discussion today. I hope you were benefited with this uh, discussion and you liked that webinar, web, you like this webinar. So thank you so much again, stay safe and feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, this is my LinkedIn link. Thank you so much.